La Fortine, Bordeaux. No Jean Lavarg. A rich world made empty and poor. The English put her on trial as a heretic. Jeanne's mind was as sharp as her sword, and she avoided all the cunning verbal traps of her prosecutors. In the end, Jeanne would not renounce her mission. The English found her guilty and burned her at the stake. But her death is not in vain. La Pucelle is the rallying cry as peasant and noblemen alike take arms. My army is an army of the people, and even without the king we are poised to strike at the English stronghold of Castillon. A victory at Castillon will crush the English pretensions in France forever. Should I die in this battle, I die for the maid of Orléans. I die as a patriot of France. Okay, this is the final Joan of Arc scenario. It's actually pretty easy. We have the trade cart carrying the French flag must survive. I have to plant that French flag loaded in the trade cart on the hill in Castillon covered with flags. Castillon is down here in the corner. I have to rendezvous with the French artillery commanded by Jean Bruno and I have to rendezvous with the French army commanded by Constable Richemont. As for hints, most of the land here is occupied and I'll need to displace Burgundy in order to build a town. I don't need to knock down all Burgundy's walls because I can use them for my own defence. The longbowmen are powerful but bombard cannons are better. I can use bombard cannons and their other siege weapons to no attack stance if they're hurting my own troops. That works out. Alright, it's time to begin. Let's begin. Sweet Jean, I shall avenge thee. So basically, Guy, Guy Jocelyn. Lord Jocelyn, the army awaits your command. Yeah, Lord Jocelyn has been telling the story so far. Now it's his turn to actually work out. There's the trade cart. It's his turn to actually do something. Guy here goes to the army of France and will have them attack Burgundy first. We fight for the Maid of Orleans. Oh. We'll see how British longbows fare against French cannon. Look at that, we've got... Oh, La Hill's sword is not bloody enough. <laughs> La Hill's sword is not bloody enough. And there's the French cannoneers. We we'll use the French cannon. First. Burgundy is just up here, if I'm not mistaken. And this is Constable Richemont. La Hire is still here. Guy Jocelyn is here. We need to keep these arbalests safe. We won't be able to make any more arbalists. We know we have captured the Burgundian stockpile of resources. Good. So we managed to defeat the Burgundians. Excellent. That was the whole point. That's all. Now we'll go after Shrewsbury.
And so Shrewsbury begins to die. Just like we want. Oh shoot. And as well, as far as we can tell. What we need now.
Here to die. I die seem to die with honor. Even the pounds. We've won. Awesome. A century of English toil, blood, and victories was reversed in a little over a year by a teenage girl. The Hundred Years' War has ended. Even more importantly, Jean's acts reignited a sense of French nationalism. Peasants and nobles alike no longer belong to lords and kings, but to France herself. We will not let Jean be forgotten. Already statues and stained glass portraits have been commissioned in hundreds of towns and cities throughout France. Her verdict of guilt was rightfully reversed, and eventually Jean of Arc was beatified as a saint. Sometimes the outcome of history is determined by strength of arms, other times by happenstance. But in 15th century France, history was determined by the will of a young girl, the only person in history to command the armies of an entire nation at the age of 17. 